A while back, we did an episode focusing on why Intel was suddenly struggling in its fight against AMD when Team Blue had long been dominant. But as AMD continues to cut into Intel's market share, you can bet that Intel has a plan to strike back. So let's have a look at what we could expect in the near future. One major AMD innovation that has helped keep costs down is its use of chiplets, smaller dies that can be put together in a modular fashion to form a whole processor. Intel continued to stick with more traditional monolithic designs for quite a while, but remember that the electronics industry is full of copycats, and even a company as big as Intel is no different. Intel has already announced that it too will be focusing on using a more modular design similar to chiplets moving forward, which should enable them to lower prices generally, but obviously Intel can't just say, see, we're doing the same thing as AMD, and expect people to go for it. I mean, it wasn't exactly a surprise when Burger King's Big Mac knockoff didn't shatter sales records. So Intel is trying to hang its hat on some of its own innovations. You see, there's a trend in the semiconductor industry towards fabless chip design. That is, companies like AMD and Nvidia design processors, but then send them off to a third party fab like TSMC to actually have the things made. The idea here is that outsourcing the actual manufacturing is cheaper than running your own fab, and also reduces delays in manufacturing problems because outside fabs tend to be very good at manufacturing many different types of chips efficiently. And even though Intel is reportedly using TSMC for its upcoming desktop graphics chips, at least for the time being, Team Blue has long operated its own fabs and shows no signs of changing course, despite past rumors. Although Intel's had many well-documented issues trying to get its 10 nanometer process off the ground, it's still banking on its own fabs and their new 10 nanometer super fin process to improve performance. Basically, it's a variation on FinFET, which was explained in this video, that allows for more electrical current and less resistance, which should ultimately make for faster chips. Intel claims that this is the biggest performance leap they've ever had that doesn't involve actually going to a smaller manufacturing process. In fact, they're so confident in their own fabs that they're actually expanding their capacity and opening what they call Intel Foundry Services which will operate as a contract manufacturer for other companies similar to TSMC. Team Blue is already targeting electronics industry giants like Qualcomm and Apple to be potential future customers for foundry services, which would open up a whole new way to bring in that sweet paper without focusing only on going head to head with AMD. But of course they still are going directly up against Team Red, not only with their chiplets, but with the elephant in the room we haven't discussed their new ZHPG graphics platform. Intel's first significant foray into discrete graphics cards in, I think, literal decades. Its first product looks like it'll be a mid-tier card that could go up against an RX 6700 XT or Nvidia's RTX 3060, so it could end up being yet another way Intel will try to compete on price. And with the current GPU shortage worldwide, there's a possibility that the super high demand for existing GPUs could push gamers to try out Intel's offering, provided they find a way to make enough supply available. And speaking of graphics, Intel has already publicly said laptop gaming is going to be a huge focus, with the goal being for lower power Z variants to deliver playable frame rates in big name titles even on thin and light notebooks. Of course, it remains to be seen how these moves will work out for Intel, but you can bet they are taking AMD's challenge lightly. You could say they're even rising to it. And our sponsor, Drop, is also rising to it. Their Karina is a space efficient and portable DIY keyboard kit with a frosty acrylic case that allows light to shine throughout the whole keyboard. It offers fully programmable RGB LEDs both above and below, and it's available with your choice of three add-on plates, aluminum, brass, and copper. Their PCB allows for hot swappable switches so you can plug in new ones on the fly, no soldering required, so don't wait. Buy yours today at the link below. Thanks for watching. Like, dislike, and check out some of our other videos. Uh, maybe comment with some video suggestions. And don't forget to subscribe and follow.